When you're named after the son of Hercules, expectations are high that you'll be a world-class winner. For Kia to name its latest global car as the Celtos means that we could expect great things from this crossover. In this video, we get to check out and see if it lives up to its mythical name. Let's do this! Hello guys, I'm Reagan and we are now here at Kia Mandaluyong to do a full feature and drive impression of the top spec Kia Seltos SX80. If you have any inquiries about any Kia vehicle or this Seltos float your boat, well then head on down here to Kia Mandaluyong and check them out. Or you may contact the person in my description below. The Kia Seltos is a global crossover that is targeted at young, tech-savvy millennial car buyers. There are three versions of this vehicle, a larger one that is made in South Korea and it's meant for developed markets, and two smaller ones that are built in India and China that is meant to be sold in emerging markets. Luckily, the Celtos version that we get here in the country is the one that's sourced from South Korea, and that also explains the pricing of this vehicle. This top-spec Celtos SX that I have here retails for 1,505,000 Philippine pesos. Now that may seem a bit pricey for a subcompact crossover, but then again, the Celtos is a bit larger than other subcompact crossovers in the market like the Hyundai Kona, and you do get a car that is built in Korea. Now that has got to count for something, yeah? Now one of the dead giveaways that we got the Korean version of the Celtos is the hood line. You see, the Korean-built Celtos have a hood line that ends before the Kia logo up front, while the Indian and the Chinese versions have a hood line that extends all the way past that Kia logo. Now, this top-spec Celtos SS that we have here gets the full LED headlight treatment in a housing that is truly unique and truly far out. It's large and it's shaped like a T. And to further add to that far out look, guys, the DRLs of the headlights extend all the way past the headlight housing and into the tiger nose front grille right here. You also get your turn signals that are in their separate housing right here at the bottom part. And I am truly liking this look, guys. Now, it just goes to show that the Chinese crossovers aren't the only ones that have a flair for outlandish design. And to further add on to that outlandish design, this Celtos also has a knurled finish here at the top of the headlight housing, and it also has a knurled finish on the Tiger Nose front grille. This is a welcome departure from your usual like black diamond or chrome front grille finishes, and I am truly digging it. Now, this top-spec Celtos SX we have in the country also has a full LED fog lights in the tasteful housing here. And to complete that look, you've got a front skid plate right there in the center that gives off that brutish yet playful vibe. Now, guys, I must admit, this Celtos that we have here, it is a definite head-turner. Now, when you check out the side profile of the Kia Celtos, you'll see that it's proof that one of Kia's presidents is a decorated car designer because his side profile is beautiful AF. The top spec Celtos here in the country gets a functional roof rails and if you notice the design of the roof rails, it is gorgeous as well. You also have a blacked out roof and a blacked out A-pillar here that goes well and ties together to the black plastic cladding found at the bottom part of the Celtos which gives the body a truly slim and sleek look. Now when you go over to the rear part, you'll see that the C-pillar pinches upward here and meets into this uh, thickened uh, satin finished metallic garnish and it gives off a look and visual illusion that the roof is sloping downward. But guys, trust me, the roof does not slope downward. It just looks that way. Now for wheels, you get 17-inch wheels here that are wrapped in 21555 R17 tires. I would have wanted to see an 18-inch option in our country, the same ones that they've released in the U.S. market. You know, those wheels come with the beautiful red center caps, and those wheels look really badass. Now, for your ground clearance, guys, well, the Kia Celtos that we have here has a ground clearance of 170 millimeters. So it's safe to say that you won't be taking this out to the trail, but rather you'd be keeping it on city roads only. Now, the gorgeous design theme continues on to the rear end of the Celtos. This has got to be one of the most beautiful looking rear ends that I've seen in a crossover. And trust me, guys, I've seen a lot of rear ends. 
in crossovers, I mean. <laughs> All right, so it starts off with this nice satin finish center strip here that ties the two LED lights together. It's beautifully designed and I love how they incorporated the reverse lights into that center strip. It gives off a truly modern and unique vibe to it. I also love the fact that, well, Kia never used any chrome on the exterior part of the Celtos. Rather, they opted for this satin metal finish uh, treatment here and it seems that they really did their homework when it comes to the millennial car buyers. They know that, well, millennials don't really like chrome too much so yeah the satin finish looks way way better at least on the Celtos now despite having such a beautiful and gorgeous rear end the Celtos also doesn't escape some of the design fails at least in my eye when you see the reflectors here you see that the reflectors are a little bit high up and a bit out of place right there it would have looked better if they just integrated this in the rear bumper but when you go down to the rear bumper you'll see that you get twin fake exhaust garnishes down here. Now, it would have been more streamlined looking if the reflectors were just here, but no, the designers of the Celtos really just had a difficult time deciding what to put at the rear end, whether a reflector or a fake exhaust garnish. So in the end, they decided to post both reflectors and that twin fake exhaust garnish right there. Now, when you open the manual lift gate, You'll see that the Celtos can accommodate 433 liters of trunk capacity. Now translated to Reagan's luggage test, we have here a hand carry luggage and I'll put this in the middle here and as you could see, there you go. It's large enough, well, to accommodate a single piece of hand carry luggage. Now, the 433 liters would be good enough for maybe a large 30 kilo luggage or maybe a couple of medium sized suitcases as well. Now let's head over to the front and see what kind of motor powers the Philippine spec Celtos SX. All Celtos variants in the Philippines gets the same 2-liter new engine that can be found in the same Celtos that are sold in the Australian market. This 2-liter baby can muster 147 horses and 179 newton meters of torque. Now while having a 2-liter engine in this Celtos is a refreshing change from all of the 1.5 liter crossovers that we've been seeing of late, well, we still don't get the more powerful turbo petrol engine that the other markets get or even a dual clutch transmission. Rather, this two liter baby here is made to Kia's intelligent variable transmission or their version of a CVT. Well, later on in the test drive, we'll just see how intelligent this transmission can be. Now, quoted the fuel economy figures for this 2-liter motor stands at 9 kilometers per liter in the city and as much as 20 kilometers per liter in the highway. Now, how in the world can this 2-liter motor muster 20 kilometers per liter, you say? Well, it is an Atkinson cycle engine which prioritizes fuel economy over performance. The Kia Celtos is marketed as a vehicle for a tech-savvy millennial, so I have high expectations when it comes to its kit and cabin amenities. Let's see how it fares. First up, the seats of this top-spec SX Celtos that we get here are not completely wrapped in leather. Instead, you get cloth seats that have leatherette inserts on the sides. To its credit though, the seats are soft and quite plush and they don't really spell Econo seats to me. Now, thankfully, your steering wheel is leather wrapped here and the wheel also has a myriad of buttons that are quite premium feeling to the touch. The buttons control your Bluetooth calling, some infotainment buttons as well, and a cruise control setup here. The steering wheel also tilts and telescopes, see? And that would be a big blessing to a lot of taller drivers out there. Moving from your steering wheel, you move on to your instrument gauge cluster and you have here a fully analog instrument gauge system. You've got a tachometer, a speedometer, and a black and white or even a grayscale multi-information display in the center that shows your vital stats. Now, having seen a lot of other crossovers in the segment that are sporting fully digital instrument gauge clusters, the fact that we have this analog setup here is a little bit on the disappointing side. Thankfully, from your traditional analog uh, gauge cluster here, you can move to your infotainment system and the infotainment system of the Celtos is a saving grace in the cabin. This baby here is an 8-inch touchscreen system that has Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. 
You also get a rear view camera here for the top spec SX. You don't get a 360 degree view camera, but guys, for a car this small, you don't really need a 360 degree view camera. Now this top spec SX also gets some rear parking sensors. So the sensors coupled with the rear view camera is more than enough to help you with most parking duties. The good thing here as well is you get uh, physical knobs and buttons on the side of your infotainment system, which should help you when it comes to fiddling around on your uh, setup whenever you're going out for a drive. That way, well, you won't have any accidents or you wouldn't get the chance to try the safety features that are found in the Celtos. The top spec SX here also gets an engine start button and a single zone automatic climate control system as well as a drive mode selector that can be found at the side of the shifter. This drive mode will uh, take you from eco to normal to sport mode. Now another frustration that I've encountered inside the Celtos is the fact that it doesn't have an electronic parking brake or an auto hold feature. Now that is a very millennial feature in most crossovers nowadays, but instead of an electric parking brake, well, you get a Tito mechanism right here. You also get a couple of cup holders that are a little bit on the small side. Let's see how it fares in my clean canteen test. So I have my clean canteen flask right here. See if it fits. It fits, but it doesn't go all the way in. So this is a fail when it comes to my clean canteen test. Now from your cup holders, you also get, well, a leatherette wrap center armrest here in the middle to rest your, well, your arms. You also have a few charging ports in the front area. I got a couple of 12 volt uh, charging ports and a sole USB port as well. Now when you look at the entire cockpit layout of the Celtos, you can see that it is a very pleasant environment to spend time in. It's quite well put together, its design is quite intuitive and quite coherent in terms of, well, setup. But when you start touching stuff, like when you touch the door panels and the dashboards, you'll see that you are actually surrounded by some pretty hard plastics. It's, um, it's nice looking, it's well put together, but well, it is still hard plastics. Thankfully though, the armrest on your door panel is still wrapped in leatherette. And you, as I mentioned, you also have that leatherette wrap center armrest right here in the middle. So with that, guys, let's go over to the back seat and check out if there are any toys or cabin amenities for your rear passengers. Now, the back seat of the Kia Seltos recovers some brownie points when it comes to space. I'm 5'6", guys, and as you can see, I got a good amount of headroom here. I'm calculating maybe around 5 inches of headroom before I touch my, the headliner. Now, the driver's seat is positioned to somebody of my height. And as you can see, I got like around 7 inches worth of space in terms of knee room and in terms of leg room. I got a ton of space as well. Now, the brownie points earned for the back seat ends there because when it comes to toys, well, even this top spec Celtos SX doesn't really get any toys at all. You don't have rear AC vents here. You don't even have a USB or a 12 volt charging port in the center. You don't even get a center armrest with a cup holder. So if you're ferrying some of your millennial friends, well, they better hang on to their Starbucks Frappuccinos because there's really no place to put it unless you want to put it right here beside the door. But I don't think this place is big enough to hold a Frappuccino. So it's quite obvious, guys, that the Kia Seltos SX is marketed really for that young millennial who probably doesn't really have a family to ferry around or maybe doesn't really have too much friends as well that will be sitting in the back seat because there's really nothing that can be found here in the back seat. Thankfully, though, the rear passenger gets a couple of uh, map pocket, well, a map pocket here. It's also finished in leather, but the driver's side doesn't get any map pockets at all. You do have some isofix tethers, so thankfully if you have like small babies, you could uh, use those. And anyway, small babies don't really need like uh, charging ports or cup holders or whatnot. <laughs> so guys, at this point, let's hop back to the driver's seat and take this uh, Celtos out for a short drive just to show you how it feels on the road. All right, so we're now behind the wheel of the Kia Seltos SX80. Now guys, if safety is a big thing for you, well, you better pony up for the top spec variant of the Seltos here in the country. Why? Because, well, this baby sports six airbags, plus it's got a plethora of all the safety features that you'd need, such as, well, ABS, you got stability control, you've got traction control, you got hill start assist and hill descent control as well. For the lower variants of the Celtos, well, you don't really get all those um, safety goodies. 
you get a couple of airbags and ABS and well um, seat belts <laughs> Now in terms of visibility guys, well the Seltos is a subcompact crossover and as subcompact crossovers go, well this baby is pretty average when it comes to visibility. My sitting position isn't really that high, it's actually quite average, it's quite normal. So it's a perfectly decent, well, visibility and sitting position for me. Granted I'm only 5'6", so maybe if you are a taller driver and given the fact that we've got a good amount of headroom here, would mean that you'd probably have uh, more. Uh, visibility if you are taller than me. <laughs> the Celtus is meant to be a global crossover after all. <laughs> now let's try the acceleration of this IVT. I am in sport mode right now guys and I must say that well it while it's not as uh, spirited as well some of the sportier crossovers that I've tried out in the past this baby can acquit itself quite well in that short burst of acceleration that I've tried it on. The IVT in sport mode feels more like a, a traditional six-speed automatic, believe it or not. The sport mode's tuning is quite decent, especially for, well, a CVT. Now, there are some poorly tuned CVTs out there, and I am happy to say, guys, that this baby is not one of them. This uh, Celtos has a CVT that feels more like an actual automatic transmission. And that for me is quite a good thing. It may not have the lightning fast shifts of a dual clutch transmission that the other markets would get, but this IVT, well, it acquits itself pretty decently. Moving now in slow going traffic, I got a pretty slow car in front of me right now. Uh, it's, um, quite, uh, it's quite well composed when it comes to shifting. It doesn't feel like it's uh, hunting for gears and all that, which is normally the case when you're driving, let's say, a DCT transmission at slow speeds. Now, when it comes to steering feel, well, the steering wheel of the Celtus is one of the lighter ones that I've tried. <laughs> it also has a dinky sounding uh, horn. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> that is so dinky. <laughs> anyway, guys, as I was saying, well, the steering wheel. Oh, there's some traffic up there. I'm gonna avoid that. I'm gonna do a U turn. Yep. Turning radius of the Celtos is a little bit on the wide side for a small co crossover. Uh, you see, I didn't, I wasn't able to do the full turn despite occupying like almost three lanes there. So the turning radius of this baby is a little bit on the wider side, so you have to take that into consideration as well. Now, as I was saying, the steering feel. Well, this baby has one of the lighter wheels that I've uh, encountered. It has a decent amount of feedback though. It's not as anesthetic as some of the other wheels that I've uh, encountered in the past. Suspension feel is a little bit on the sporty side. It could uh, take corners with a little bit more gusto than your regular average uh, subcompact crossovers out there. I could even say that it almost rivals the handling characteristics of a Mazda CX-30, believe it or not. NVH is also quite good. It's uh, pretty much what you'd expect from a subcompact crossover that's already tickling the premium crossover level. It's quite decent and quiet inside in this cabin. And that's actually nice. Sounds really good as well. Of course, this is just a test unit with a little bit over 2,000 kilometers on the clock. So in terms of suspension, it doesn't really have any worrying noises underneath your car. The thing is, I've owned a Kia for almost 10 years. I have a Sorento, a 2011 model. And when it comes to the suspension tuning, you know, Kia really knows how to make quite sturdy suspension systems. And I would be very, very confident that the Celtos would also sport the same characteristic. So overall guys, well, the Kia Celtos has it really lived up to its name as the son of Hercules. I must say that yes, this baby has what it takes to be a global crossover and that is its main mission, its quest if you may in its life which is to be a global crossover that would please like a wide expanse of car drivers and buyers out there all over the planet. I must say that uh, well Kia 
has already ticked all the right boxes when it comes to the Celtos, well, when it comes to being a global subcompact crossover. The Kia Seltos is a welcome addition to Kia's local crossover lineup with its dashing good looks and decent drive. The large interior space inside, well, that's perfect for the millennial that lives an active lifestyle. While this handsome exterior design is perfect eye candy for whenever you alight at the driveway of a five-star hotel. Once again, thank you guys for watching one of my car reviews. If you like this review, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. I promise you guys, I will make it worth your while if you subscribe to Reagan's Rides. I'm Reagan, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>